Ten minutes after the hour now. Tomorrow he hosts Live Earth, a 24-hour concert series with performances on all seven continents, all designed to fight global warming. Former Vice President Al Gore is the chairman of Live Earth, and he joins me now. It's good to see you, good Mr. To see Vice you, President. John. It's Thank been you. a long time. It has been. Like 18 months of my life went by covering <laughs> you in the 2000 <laughs> campaign. It's good to get a chance to sit down and talk with you. I want to talk about Live Earth in a second, but I, and I know that you're treating this as a, as a private family matter, but as, as a father, and I'm a father of a... A uh, son who's just a couple of years younger than yours, you got to be pretty concerned about what happened the other day. Uh, well, we're very happy that he's getting treatment and uh, that nobody was hurt and that uh, uh, he's in the in the right place and has asked for the right kind of treatment. And beyond that, we are treating it as a yeah. private family. Is this matter. is this a full rehab type of thing, or when as you say I treatment? Say, uh, we're following the medical advice and. Uh, yeah, we'll, we're keeping it private. Well, our, our, our best to you on, on that you. front. Yes, Thank you very said, much. Sure we love him very father, much. Right? Um, on Live Aid, on, on Live Earth, sorry, Live Aid, Live Eight, Live Earth, yeah. uh, this time around, you were promising on Larry King last night uh, some surprises. One of them supposed to come out today. What, yeah. are you, what are you announcing? Well, I'm happy to announce here on CNN that uh, a surprise new concert venue is going to be the mall in our nation's capital. Fantastic. And you may remember earlier in the year, uh, there was an effort to have one of the major concerts there and a couple of uh, global warming naysayers uh, used parliamentary tricks in the Congress to block that. Well, instead of the cavalry riding to the rescue, the American Indians came to the rescue. The Museum of the American Indian, the National Museum of the American Indian, has a concert venue permitted they, they invited me to come, and a couple of great friends of mine, fantastic superstars, Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood, are going to come as a favor, perform a song. Blues Nation, one of the greatest Native American groups ever, uh, and people are invited to come out to the, that location on the mall uh, at 10 a.m. tomorrow. But, you know, this is only one of 10,000 events around the world. Eight major concerts, special performances now from the mall, leading off the concerts in North America, special performance from Antarctica for the first time ever, rounding out the seven yeah, continent Nun Nunatech, venue. is that what the, <laughs> yeah. the name of the group yeah. is? They've never, I heard that this is their first performance. You're going to love them. They're, they're British scientists and they've been practicing for six months on this and they're actually extremely good. But of course the 150 greatest musical performance uh, performers in the world are going to be uh, at the Meadowlands Giants Stadium mm -hmm. uh, in New York, uh, in, in London, um, Tokyo, uh, Tokyo Rio, Rio de back, Janeiro, Johannesburg, uh, uh, Sydney, Shanghai, Tokyo. Uh, it's very exciting, but it's all focused on a very serious message, right. and that is to solve the climate crisis. It's the launch of a three-year campaign, John, and we're asking everybody to sign up to the seven-point pledge. You can go to liveearth.org or algore.com and find the pledge. And we hope that all two billion people who uh, are estimated to be in this audience will sign up. I know that's uh, expecting too much, but that's why we're launching a three-year campaign, because mm -hmm. we've got to cross a political tipping point worldwide in order to solve this climate crisis. Back in 1992 in the campaign, uh, George Bush Sr. referred to you as Ozone Man. <laughs> and, and, and there are still a lot of critics out there uh, of you saying that you're too alarmist about the environment. Are you ever going to be able to win those people over? I hope so. It's not a political issue. It, it really is a moral issue. And it, it is hard to think about this because nothing in our prior history prepares us for the fact that we have this new relationship to the Earth. We have quadrupled human population in less than a century. We're using these very powerful technologies to exploit the Earth now. We're putting 70 million tons of global warming pollution every day into the Earth's atmosphere as if it's an open sewer. And of course it's having the effect that the scientists have long told us it would. The North Pole is melting. Could be gone in 35 years unless we act. Uh, there's an area of snow the size of California in, in Antarctica near the South Pole that's been melting. Uh, these and many other well, look, they Although predicted... there are some people who say that the snowpack is actually increasing. Well, in no, uh, actually, it was long predicted in Antarctica that the increased evaporation from a warmer ocean would cause more, more snowfall in the interior, but there's 
there's now new evidence showing that it's in negative balance even there. Let me, let me look ahead to 08. Which of the candidates out there champions the environmental causes that you do who you would feel comfortable voting for? Well, it's 500 days uh, away, and I think it's too early. If I do my job right, all of them will make it their number one issue. It's still being treated as a side issue now. It seems that the person who's more on the same page as you than anyone else is Michael Bloomberg. You know, he wants to change the entire fleet of taxis here in New York City to hybrids by the year 2010. He's got some other environmental issues. Is he the sort of person you could vote for even as an independent? Well, my, Mike has said some good things and has done some good things on this issue. Uh, an independent's never won uh, a race for president. I don't even know if he will be a candidate. Uh, again, I'm focused on trying to change opinion at the grassroots level so that all of the candidates will incorporate this message. We've got a, a full-blown planetary emergency on our hands. And even though it's hard to realize and absorb and recognize that, that is exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. And our kids, John, you were talking about your, your kids and mine. Not too many decades from now, they're going to ask one of two questions of us here at the beginning of the 21st century. Either, what were they thinking? Didn't they care about us? How could they do this to us? Or they'll ask another question, the one I prefer that they ask. How do they get their act together and find the, the moral courage to rise to this challenge? That's what Live Earth is all about, the beginning of an, it's an SOS call, the beginning of a three-year campaign to get us across that tipping point, and let's solve this thing. Well, we wish you a lot of luck tomorrow, and thank you for sharing the news this thank morning you. about this concert on the mall. <laughs> That'll be exciting. Al Gore, thanks thank very much. Good to see you again. Good to see you. Betty?